In this video, we're going to take a look at independent versus dependent compound events when dealing with probability. So first of all, independent events are two events that are completely separate from each other. So for example, if you are going to draw a card from a deck of cards and then roll a dice, the what you roll on the dice has nothing at all to do with what card you drew from the deck. So those are two completely separate events. They do not affect each other. Okay, so events do not affect one another. When you're talking about dependent events, these are two events that are not separate from one another. So an example would be if I draw a card from a deck of cards and then I draw a second card from that deck, but I do not replace the first. Since I didn't replace the first, now there are less cards to choose from and that affects the probability of the second event, okay? So the events do affect one another. So let's take a look at some events and then we'll in or dependent and calculate the probabilities. So the first one, you roll a fair six-sided die and then draw one card from a standard deck of cards. What is the probability of getting a two on the die and drawing a heart? Well, if you think about these two events, the what I roll on the dice is not in any way going to affect what I draw out of the deck of cards. They're completely separate events that have nothing to do with each other. So these are called independent events, okay? So when I calculate the probability, I'm gonna start with the probability of getting the two on the dice. On a fair dice, there is one two out of six total sides. So my probability of getting a two on the dice is one out of six. So now my probability of the second event the probability of drawing a heart from a standard deck of cards. Well, in a standard deck of cards, there are 52 total cards, and there are 13 hearts in the deck. So my probability of getting a heart um, would be 13 out of 52. So before I proceed with this, I mean, these are compound events, so now to figure this out, what I would need to do is multiply these two. But before I do that, I'm going to try to simplify. So 13 and 52 are both divisible by 13. And so 13 divided by 13 is 1, and 52 divided by 13 is 4. So that simplifies to 1 fourth. Nothing else simplifies in this problem. So when I multiply straight across, 1 times 1 is 1, and 6 times 4 is 24. So the probability of this event happening is 1 out of 24. When you divide, you get 0 0.041667. And so this is approximately 4%. So the probability is 1 out of 24, or in other words, 4% chance. Again, those are independent events. All right, let's take a look at another example. So this one says you have three pairs of red socks, two pairs of green socks, and seven pairs of white socks. What is the probability of pulling out one red pair and then pulling out one white pair without replacement? So that's the key here. When you do not replace the first pair, then when you draw the second pair, there are less options in the second round. So the probability changes because of what happened in the first event. So we call these dependent events because the second event does depend on what happens in the first event. So to calculate this probability, um, first of all, let's kind of draw a picture of what's going on here. So we have three pairs of red socks. So I'm going to do red, 
red, red. Two pairs of green sacks, so green, green, and seven pairs of white sacks, so white, 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 one more, white. So that's what's in the drawer. So that gives us a good visual of what's going on. So the question is, what is the probability of pulling out one red pair? So let's focus on that first event. To pull out a red pair, there are three red options out of a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 total pairs of sacks. So the probability of that first event happening is 3 out of 12. Okay, the second event, then pulling out one white pair of sacks. Okay, well, if we look at the situation, um, we have or actually, we just, let's go back a second. So we pulled out a red pair. So now what you're going to do is cross out one of these reds because that red pair is gone. That's already out because it says without replacement. So now the probability of pulling out a white pair, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white pairs of sacks out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 total socks that are left in the drawer. Notice we have one less pair of socks in the drawer because of that white, that red pair that stayed out. So again, that's why the, these are dependent events because that second um, event changed based on the first. So now to solve this, we need to multiply these two probabilities, but first we're going to simplify if we can. 3 and 12 are both divisible by 3. So this turns into a 1, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Nothing else in this problem simplifies, so we can multiply straight across, and we get 7 over 44. So the probability of this happening is 7 out of 44, which is the same as 0 0.159091. And if I change that to a percent, that is going to round to 16%. So it's a 7 out of 44 chance or a 16% chance. Again, those are dependent events because the second event changed based on what happened in the first event. All right, let's look at another example. You have three pairs of red socks, two pairs of green socks, and seven pairs of white socks. What is the probability of pulling out one red pair and then pulling out one white pair with replacement? So in this one now, you're going to pull out a red pair, and then they want you to pull out a white pair, but they want you to replace the first. Since you're replacing the first, the same number of socks are going to be in the drawer, and so the probability of the second event has nothing to do with what happened in the first event because nothing's changing since you're putting that original pair back in. So this would be a situation of independent events again because the second event is not affected by the first. So let's take a closer look at figuring this out. So again, let's draw a picture. So we have three red pairs, two green pairs, and seven white pairs. Okay, so there's our picture. All right, what's the probability of pulling out a red pair? Well, we have three reds out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 total. So 3 out of 12. For the second event, now we're going to put that pair of socks back in. So I'm not going to cross anything out of my picture for the second event because everything's still in there. So now what's the probability of pulling out a white pair? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 white pairs out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 total. Now again, notice how the bottoms are both 12 because the second event did not change based on the first. And that's another example of why these are still independent events. So now to figure this out, we need to multiply the two fractions, but we are going to simplify first. 3 and 12 are both divisible by 3, so this simplifies to 1 fourth. Nothing else in this problem simplifies, so when we multiply straight across, we get 1 times 7 is 7, and 4 times 12 is 48. So the probability of this happening is 7 out of 48. When you divide, 
you get 0 0.145833, which is the same as a 15% chance. So it's a 7 out of 48 chance and a 15% chance of happening. All right, let's take a look. The next example, it says you draw three cards from a standard deck of playing cards and replace each card back into the deck after each draw. What is the probability of drawing all three cards that are spades? Okay, well, since it's saying that you are replacing each after the draw, this is going to be an example of independent events again. If you did not replace them, then it would be dependent. All right, so now we have three events. So what's the probability of drawing all three cards as spades? So in a standard deck of cards, when you first draw out a card, you have 13 spades in the deck. So 13 possibilities out of 52 total. Now you draw that card, and then you're going to put it back in the deck. So now, what are your chances of drawing a spade on the second card? Well, there's still 13 spades in the deck out of 52 total. Now let's say you get the spade the second time. Now you're going to put that spade back in the deck. And now you're going to draw again. So there's still 13 spades in the deck because you replaced it out of 52 total. So this is the math problem that we have to do. And just like in other compound events, we're going to multiply the fractions. But we do want to simplify first. So 13 and 52 are both divisible by 13. So this simplifies to 13 divided by 13 is 1, and 52 divided by 13 is 4. All of these simplify to 1 fourth. So now, if we multiply straight across, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 4 is 16, times another 4 is 64. So the probability of this happening is 1 out of 64, which is 0 0.015625, which is the same as a 2% chance. So it's a 1 out of 64 or a 2% chance of happening. And again, it's independent because you put the card back each time. All right, the last one. You and your friend are dress shopping for the winter dance. You tried on three white dresses, two red dresses, a green dress, and a blue dress. Your friend tried on two black dresses, a red dress, a white dress, and a yellow dress. What is the probability that you both choose a white dress? Well, this, is again, is an example of independent events because you tried on all those dresses and your friend tried on separate dresses, okay? So each event is completely separate. So let's focus on your dresses first. It says you tried on three white dresses, two red dresses, a green dress, and a blue dress. And the question is, what's the probability that you choose a white dress? Well, there are three white dresses out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total. All right, now let's... Consider your friend. Your friend tried on two black dresses, a red dress, a white dress, and a yellow dress. And the question is, what's the probability that she also chooses a white dress? Well, there is one white dress out of one, two, three, four, five total. So her chances are one out of five. So now, just like other compound events, we want to multiply these. Nothing simplifies, so 3 times 1 is 3, and 7 times 5 is 35. So the probability is 3 out of 35, which when you divide equals 0 0.085714, which is the same, if you move the decimal two places, as a 9% chance. So it's a 3 out of 35 or a 9% chance that you would both pick a white dress. So those are some examples of independent versus dependent events.